Now that we've had our first look at data acquisition using survey data, let's look at it using LiDAR data. We're going to start from fresh here. We're going to import an LAS file into uh, data acquisition, see how that's treated, and see that we can export a surface out of there for inroads, MX, GeoPack, or in a uh, land XML format if we want. Same tools, same end result, just a different way to get there. And if we look at the uh, concept a little bit here, it's the same as when we're using the field books. We're populating the field books. We can drag and drop that file to process it. The surface is automatically created. It's stored in the DGN file. And once we're happy with that surface, we can export it to other formats if need be. So let's take a look at using a LiDAR file. Now continuing on with data acquisition, I'm just going to flip to a new MicroStation file and demonstrate the capability of data acquisition in working with LiDAR data. So I'm going to simply file and uh, select open. And in my training directory, I have um, a LiDAR file here called data acquisition LiDAR. So I'm going to go ahead and open that file. And that's a blank file. There's nothing in here right now as far as uh, surfaces or field books. It's all empty. But what I want to do is I want to import or create a surface using LiDAR data. Going back to just micro, not MicroStation, but um, Windows Explorer, I am going to go down to my Z Supplemental Files folder that's stored down in there under my Envision CAD inroads folder structure. And there's one in here called Serpent Mound LAS File. I'm going to left click and drag that into the data acquisition panel. Now as soon as I do that, I get another dialog that pops up. And in this case, this LiDAR file only has one classification in it called ground. Typically you'd have ground, maybe buildings, high vegetation, low vegetation, water, the different types of classification that can be collected with LiDAR. But um, in this case, that's not the what's provided in the file we have. And the other thing that we want to do here is we can define some tolerances. Right now, it's set to one-tenth of a meter or foot. I can't remember which units this file was in. But again, this is just demonstration. I'm going to set that Z tolerance to 4 for this tile filter. And I'm going to import this. But what I want to do is I want to filter it before I import it. So when I select the Filter button, MicroStation is going to go out, read that original LiDAR file, um, reduce the number of points that are being imported, and I can see uh, I might have been a little too generous on my Z tolerance there. It filtered out 99.5% of the points that were there. So let's go back to a tolerance of 1. I think it must have been meters. So let's uh, re-filter that. But that will speed up the processing when we bring it in. So we'll still uh, we'll still accept this. Um, again, we're just demonstrating the capabilities. So if I accept the results, get back to my MicroStation window here. There's always this prompt that says "Done Processing Change Events." You'll see that whether you're importing LiDAR data or Fieldbook data or raw survey data. Now, if I come back up to my data acquisition pane, I can see that there's a Serpent Mound model that has been built. If I just left click on it, my data acquisition details panel, which again, if it's not open, can be activated by selecting the details icon. But it tells me the side length of the triangles. The dissolve type is set to none right now, so that's really not doing anything for me. We'll come back to that. But I've got 217 some thousand triangles. And we've got a major and a minor contour interval displayed, high range, low range, a little bit of information about that DTM. Or surface is actually the term I should be using. If I enable that surface display just by checking it on, it'll write those graphics to my CAD file. So I just need to do a fit here. And I'll zoom in so we can see a little bit more of what's going on is that I do have triangles and I automatically have uh, contours displayed as well. If I want to expand out the, the fields here, we can see we have point features, which we can't really see. They're overwritten by the um, triangle vertices. But if I expand out features, 
This is the different types of elements that can be displayed out of that DTM. If I decide that I don't want to see something, we can just simply toggle it off, whether it be uh, brake lines, major or minor contours. Now that I have those off, you can see these are those composing elements, which are just LiDAR uh, XYZ locations. If I decide to, I don't need those on my screen, we'll just turn off the display for them, and uh, we won't be able to see them in their spots. So let's take those off. And just like any other surface that was created, whether it be from a field book or a LiDAR file, is we can define the major and minor contour intervals on the fly. The screen's going to update for us. So we do have a live surface 